My name is John V. Welcome to Chautauqua People. My guest today is Don Kimes, Artistic Director of VACI, Visual Arts at Chautauqua Institution. He is Professor of Art and Head of the Studio Art Program at American University in Washington, D.C. Don, where did you spend your childhood? Actually, I spent my childhood in Oil City, Pennsylvania. Okay. Um, it, it, and, and lived there for uh, until I was 12, then we moved to Pittsburgh. Right. And, uh, so you're relatively a local person. Yeah, relatively, yeah. Uh -huh. I mean, interestingly, when I first came up here, uh, uh, I didn't realize I was as close to Oil City as I am. I kind of did a full circle. Really? <laughs> yeah. Really? Okay. And how did you develop an interest in art? I never knew you could do anything else. <laughs> 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 yeah. I'm this, it's, it's not common, I mean, but I all, I, from as early as I can remember, I was going to be an artist. I, 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 I uh, used to go over to my grandfather's house on Saturday mornings because he was an insurance salesman and he had reams of paper and I would draw all day Saturday morning when start as early, from the time I was four years old. Really? And they supported that and then you went along. Right. So, so where did you do your formal education in art? I did my formal education all over the place. I I, uh, I did I went to uh, let's see the, I went to Westminster College in Western Pennsylvania. Went to the University of Pittsburgh. I uh, did a little bit at the Pittsburgh Arts and Cra Craft Center. Um, also studied in Mexico in Mexico City and uh, in New York, where I my you know where I, I had my most fruitful and and uh, meaningful experiences were the time spent in New York. Right. Now, did you have any significant mentors along the way? Oh, I had, uh, I had some am amazing mentors. Okay. Uh, a lot of the reason I teach, I, I, I built the program here at Chautauqua is because of the mentors I had. Um, they were people who, uh, I, I just was cleaning out some books today in the office and found you know, some of them who were not even that well known, but ba you know, some art magazines from the early 60s, and there they were, a couple of them in there. Um, just fabulous teachers, mostly from uh, the New York Studio School and Brooklyn College in New York. Mm -hmm. Artists who were involved in, uh, the older ones were involved in the uh, New York School and, and that whole shift from Paris to New York that happened in the post war period. Okay, can you tell me a little more about that? Uh, it, uh, the uh, post-war period, there was a, a, a major shift uh, all, all because of, uh, uh, you know, people trying to get away from the devastation in Europe or trying to escape Hitler, and, and a, a huge number of artists had moved to New York. There was also a group of artists who were already here in the country, uh, people like Jackson Pollock, Willem de Kooning, Franz Klein, Philip Guston, um, and uh, I had uh, one te two teachers who, who were uh, two of the only women in that entire movement, uh, two mentors, I'd, I would call them more than teachers. Uh, and uh, one was Mercedes Matter, and another was a woman named Vita Peterson. And they were very close to, to that whole, whole group of people who uh, were really responsible for uh, shifting the focus of the uh, epicenter of the art world from Europe to the United States. Right. And ended up in New York City? In New York, downtown New York, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. Now what is meant by abstract expressionism? That's a movement in art that happened. It was, uh, it kind of coincided with jazz in a lot of ways, you know, a little bit, I mean, the, the evolution uh, roughly parallel to the way jazz evolved in America. And I would say that the two great contributions of, of uh, the United States to world culture in the 20th century were uh, jazz and uh, abstract expressionism. Uh, they were two movements that happened in the, the United States uh, that were not sort of coming from some other place. Right. Uh, I mean, they, you know, they had their roots in other, other things. Jazz obviously had its roots in in uh, you know African music and uh, uh, you know a lot of uh, uh, southern music that was happening during the 19th century, uh, but it uh, it's the kind of improvisational nature of jazz and the improvisational nature of abstract expressionism are, are hand in hand. You know, one's mm -hmm. a glove and one's a hand. Right, <laughs> right. Now, how did you find your way to Chautauqua? I was I had been living in New York. I. I, I you know, as I said, I moved around to a lot of different schools and ended up 
uh, living in, in uh, New York and spent, um, well, I had been there for about, let's see, 86. I would, I'd been there about nine years uh, when, when I uh, found Chautauqua. Um, a job came up, I applied for it, and uh, didn't get it. Uh, the, the, uh, uh, but I stayed in touch with uh, Dick Reddington, mm -hmm. and uh, the person that they hired ended up uh, uh, deciding she just couldn't do it. And uh, after a year left, and Dick said to Esme, uh, Esme Thompson, she's at Dartmouth now, um, and she's been a friend ever since, but he said to Esme, Esme, can you go through all those resumes we looked at uh, and see if there's somebody I should invite to take your place then if you can't stay? Mm -hmm. And um, she went through and she said, why didn't you hire this guy? Right. <laughs> uh, and so I, got the, I, I was offered the job. I didn't know where it was. I got on a plane, came out for the interview, went back to uh, New York. I, uh, uh, and, and kind of forgot about it. And a year later, he calls me up and says, are you interested in doing this? And I said, yeah, I am. It's a summer thing, and I'd love to do it. Uh, the problem is my wife's having a baby when you, the, uh, the same week you are opening. Um, but uh, um, I'd love to do it. And then I, I, um, I actually I was visiting my grandparents that weekend and in Oil City, and I said, oh, I got this summer job at this place called Chautauqua, and my grandfather said to me, Chautauqua, I know Chautauqua, I go musky fishing up there. <laughs> and I, I said, Mus musky fishing, I didn't know it was near you. And he said, yeah, yeah, it's, just, it's like 50 miles up the road. And I, he said, your, your grandma and I were married in Mayville in 1923 or something like that. <laughs> 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 it like, so it was a, it was a, 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 a you know, I, di I didn't realize, I, I kind of assumed that it was sort of north of New York, not west of New yeah, York. And, yeah, yeah. Uh, so that's how I came to Chautauqua. Goodness. Uh, I came, also came to Chautauqua with, uh, my wife had the baby seven days before my first summer here. Wow. Uh, and by C-section, and we came out, and I cleared out half. We put all our stuff in, on one side of the station wagon and a, a sleeping bag, and my wife and the baby laid on the other side, and we drove out here. Goodness. And <laughs> from, the, from New York, and she laid in the back of the car, and, and oh, and it was hot that first summer. Oh, it was so hot. Uh -huh. Baby had colic. The only thing that would calm the baby down, his name's Jesse. The only thing that would calm Jesse down was uh, for when he had colic, we found out, was um, to the, the great uh, joy, of, I'm sure, of a lot of Stockwins, was wheeling him around in the back of the amphitheater when the symphony was playing. Oh, so <laughs> <laughs> but when he heard that music play, and he just stopped. That was it. That, that was, was it. it. That was it. So what, what was the status of the art program upon your arrival at Chautauqua? Um, it was a, uh, the, the students were much younger than they are now. They were, uh, I, think, I think we had 23 full-time students that first summer, and they ranged from uh, sort of high school age, mostly from the, er the general area, uh, to, to uh, s college students. Um, the, it was, uh, um, and, the, and uh, the building itself was just in terrible condition. I mean, we could step through floors. There were beams separating from the ceilings. The building was in very bad shape. Uh, and in, in a short period of time, we established a pretty major reputation for the school and started attracting uh, students from all over the country and eventually all over the world. Um, and, uh, uh, and after a number of years, actually, we were able to raise the funds to, to fix the building. We started our own gallery, because the, there was a gallery in the former, I forget the name of the cafeteria, mm -hmm. but it was a cafeteria until the 1950s, and then it, it, uh, it became a gallery, and, the, and there was an independent art group there um, that, uh, you know, hosted shows. Uh, you know, it didn't sell a lot of work, uh, and again, that building was in, in very, uh, you know, pretty pretty bad state of disrepair. Um, over the course of a number of years, we we started a campaign, raised money, and I convinced the gallery to join with Chautauqua and become uh, part of the visual arts program there, uh, and then went and then. Uh, 
a few years later, we discontinued our the gallery that, that had been established through the school on uh, Bester Plaza and moved that space into the Fowler Kellogg, what's now the Fowler Kellogg Gallery. But we raised a lot of money and completely repaired that fabulous uh, uh, Fowler Kellogg building. We completely uh, redid the School of Art and we essentially built a new Stroll Art Center and have what is without question the finest gallery of any summer art program in the country. Yeah. That's, that's terrific. Now I visited the school during the open studio night mm -hmm. and had a terrific time. Yeah. And how do you recruit your students? Well, it's, it, a lot of it happens uh, through word of mouth. I mean, we do put things out on listings and that sort of thing, but uh, mostly it's the reputation that we have now that, that causes students to uh, apply, you know. Um, it's, uh, uh, there's a, a uh, there, as I said, there's word of mouth. Students have gone there before, uh, but we're, I, a lot of times I have no idea where these, where I found, where this student came from. We got, have students this year, students from, uh, we had students from China, from Singapore, from France, from uh, oh, all, all over the world, right. and all, all over the country. Uh, right. Korea, two students from Korea. Goodness. Uh, so uh, I, I can't tell you how they found out about it. I just know that it has a, the school now has a, a, a ma pretty major reputation. It's one of the strongest programs in the country. Great, great. Let's take a look at the school sure. and some of these wonderful students. Okay, that sounds good. We shot some video past few days. That would be great. Um, yeah, this is the quadrangle. This is, that, that during the summer is uh, just completely a buzz with activity, 24-7. The lights go on in late June and I don't think they go off until late August. And, and uh, the students who were there all summer, uh, if they saw this picture of this quiet, beautiful quadrangle, would uh, be shocked because they're they're in there working all the time. It's it's they're a highly motivated bunch, and that and the building is is a fabulous place. This is our ceramic center that's all shut down right now. We have a eight kilns in there. One with one gorgeous Blau kiln. Uh, it's a fifty thousand dollar industrial kiln, and and we turn our kilns on also. At the, we fire as much in seven weeks as most academic programs do in a year, maybe Goodness. two years. And look at the results these kids have. Yeah, yeah. this is uh, this is uh, Ronnie Dickerson. He's a student who's actually from West Virginia, um, and uh, had a great summer. And really, really moved a long way with his work in ceramics. This is a student, yeah. Sam Sherman. Uh, Sam's um, from the University I, of Pennsylvania. Um, okay. And he's and working with, uh, with this, he, he does this process of creating a digital image and layering it and then uh, painting what that image looks like. So this, they're out there actually, that's not a digital image that he's showing you, it's actually a oil on canvas, but it, it looks very much like a digital image. Mm -hmm. And he's just graduated, as I said, from, from uh, Penn. We have about 20 painters, about 10 ceramic students, and about eight sculptors. And, uh, and s but people cross over. They, they do all sorts of different things. That's David Dupac, terrific, terrific student. Uh, I just got a great letter from him. He said that the summer really changed his life. He, he hadn't even been thinking about going to graduate school, and he's, he's applying now. Wonderful. Um, and these little pots that you see around, see the pot in the back, it's mm -hmm. actually not little, it's about a foot and a half tall. One of the ceramic students made a pot for every student in the school this really? summer and they all glazed their own pots. Oh, and, uh, I should be a student. Yeah. <laughs> so. Now whose place is this? This would be my home turf here, that's my studio. I'm talking to, uh, that's the, Barbara Grossman's a visiting artist, she's a, uh, associated with the, well, I pulled out an old painting to show her and, and compared one of my older landscapes to, to uh, something that I had done this summer and was shocked because they're 40 years apart, the two paintings, but there's a real connection mm -hmm. even though they're very abstract. It's Barbara Grossman who's a, uh, associated with the National Academy of Design and the other person is Gina Werfel who's a, been a friend of mine for uh, oh, close, almost 40 years now. And Gina teaches at the University of California at Davis, and uh, 
we're just looking at I do a lot of my work on the floor mm -hmm. or on a table flat and uh, they're just they just came in the, happened to walk into the studio at the same time you walked in and uh, so we were just talking about that. I love that studio, though. It's a great space. It's a wonderful space. The whole quadrangle is a great space. Everything, it's a U-shaped building, and everything kind of gravitates out to the, um, the center of the quad. The commons. And, and, and like a common area, yeah. And they all talk. Mm -hmm. yeah. What's this? This is my uh, uh, departure from my standard practice. <laughs> uh, this is a, 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 earlier in the summer, um, I got talking with John Shedd over at Chautauqua about uh, the crosswalks, and he said, oh, would you want to do a crosswalk? And I said, yeah, I'd love to do a painting on a crosswalk. So there's nothing like my other work. It's actually based on uh, uh, my favorite floor pattern uh, in Pompeii. Really, uh, in, in of a Roman mosaic, and uh, it, it, it kind of took that floor pattern and, and riffed off of that. When I looked at that, I thought, thought Monticello, the, the floor pattern there. Yeah. Know, it's, it's not a, it's not a replication to that, but same it, kind of thing. It's the same kind of thing, and it's actually a pattern that shows up in a lot of different cultures. It is. It kind of spins and it becomes three dimensional. Everybody says, "Oh, perspective was invented in the Renaissance." No, perspective it existed long before that. And that, that particular pattern has a, a kind of relation to, to the perspective that existed in Greece and in Rome and in China and India and a lot of other places. Right. So. Now, these students seem to, to be um, immensely happy, and it was so much fun going up there. I said to myself, you've been coming to Chautauqua forever, and I have <laughs> never visited an open studio night. Yeah. And, and, and it, was, it was so much fun. I'm going to yeah. come back every year. But I look at the students, they're happy. They're upbeat. They seem to be very cooperative. What, what are your academic goals for the summer program for these kids? Well, actually, one of the goals really is, uh, you know, um, not to create a situation where they're competing with each other, right. but where they're instead supporting each other. Um, I think that that, that notion is, is uh, sort of how one survives as an artist. Your peer group is so important to, to, uh, to to who you are for the rest of your life. Like with Gina, who I mentioned there, right. having known her for 40 years, right. I, I met her in school. Right. You know, uh -huh. And she's part of my, was part of my peer group then, and she's part of my peer group now, 40 years later. And that's, that's a, a, a point that I impress on them pretty, uh, pretty heavily at, mm -hmm. uh, in the summer. And they tell me at the end of the summer, you know, I, I, I kind of, thought that was kind of strange that you were saying that, or that, I, you know, I didn't, I was listening, but, it's so true. I know this is going to. These people are going to be part of my life forever now, uh, and and they support each other. They 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 care about one another, and uh, it's 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 what keeps me teaching. You know? Right. Uh, right. Now, what do we do to encourage the, the, those peer relations during the years? I think about housing or the eating or and the like. Oh, you mean during after there's they some, leave? There's no. There's, there's the summer. There's summertime. In the summer, yeah. They they. It's it's. Really, the whole thing is uh, just a bunch of uh, younger artists coming together with a bunch of artists who are a little more experienced. You know, uh, in the academic world, we call them students and and teachers. I, I really call I learn as much from students though as students learn from from me. And so, uh, uh, I, I feel like as a teacher uh, that what I can give to people is really using art as a way to understand life. That's what I really try to teach. Right, right. Um, but uh, yeah, they live together, they eat together, they work together, and so does the faculty. So it's, it's this intense seven weeks of common struggle and shared experience. And that's what, it creates a kind of uh, density of experience that, you, that, I, that you, one can't really find in, in the academic world, where right. you're kind of compartmentalized and you're, you're working you know, on Mondays and Thursdays on this, and Tuesdays and Fridays on this, and you know, and 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 it's it breaks up. Here, it's twenty four seven art, uh, and and we all share the the struggle and the right. Uh, right. Do you attempt to introduce any new items? So, so for example, in music, the students have certain pieces of music they're expected to play at certain ages along the way as an undergraduate, and then traditionally, when they would do a summer program, it's do something different. Uh -huh. So, for example, we're doing jazz as you talk with this week. If uh -huh. you've never done, if you've never done jazz 
play some jazz in our summer program? I think, well, uh, it's really, um, yes, yeah, definitely. I mean, it, 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 it's, uh, it's, a t it's a time to generate ideas. I tell them not to come in and try and work on some seven-week project, but to create a lot of small-scale ideas and to step out of the box of what they already know, may maybe use a little bit of what they know and, st and look around outside of that. Right. Um, and it is, and they re really, art, art students really have, in, in many ways, what art students do, you know, it's not, it's not like music. We don't go out and try to do Rembrandt's paintings. You know, it's, it's all about, uh, wh where in music you might try to play a piece by Got Beethoven. Um, but, uh, but in, it, so, so the artist has, you know, the, the one distinguishing thing about the students in the art program is that they're here creating art. They have more in common with like the composer than the performer, right. or more in common with the playwright than the actor. Right. Uh, more important, more more in common with the choreographer than the ballerina. Right. Um, but they do work together, you know, and they do some they do some terrific things where they influence each other. Um, but, but that is one one you know different characteristic of, of what it is to be making art. Right, uh, right. Okay, um, during your watch, and it sounds like the uh, program has become uh, more refined, the students are older, they seem to be more capable. How do, can you tell me a little bit about the selection process for these students? Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, and, and I will say that we still have younger students in, in other aspects of the program. We, ha we run special studies classes. Right. We actually have students that run from six years old to, uh, I think we had a, a person in a drawing class who was 91 this summer. So, <laughs> so, so the, it's, it's the, j just to, to, to throw a, that caveat in there, uh, it's, it, it is a, a broad-based kind of overall program. However, in terms of this focused seven-week program that I'm talking about, right. uh, rather than the one or two-week classes that people tend to take at Chautauqua, uh, in the seven-week program, um, the selection process is uh, they put together a portfolio and they download it online into Slide Room and um, they write an essay and uh, they get a couple of references and uh, a resume and they submit all that mm -hmm. uh, uh, online and then I, go, I spend days and days going through all of it and, uh, and picking, you know, 37 people. Right. Uh, Out of how many applications typically? Uh, we, we're probably running, I'd say, you know, probably, I, I'm guessing five to one, something like that. Goodness, goodness. Yeah, yeah. So that's, that's uh, an enormous uh, yeah, accomplishment Yeah, but they're, already, the they're already, they're um, already, and uh, they're already kind of self-filtered anyways. Uh, you know, they're, they're, these are people who have already, uh, they're not kind of trying to decide about being an artist. They've, uh, they've already been filtered at that level. They either are already in graduate school or they want to go to graduate school mm -hmm. um, or are out of graduate school. Right. Uh, I, I talked to several of them and was surprised to see we completing, just completed bachelor's degrees full yeah. of fire and, oh, yeah, yeah. and they were ready to do serious work. Yeah, yeah. No. And I don't, I don't look at, I, I, I look at the work first though. Uh -huh. uh, so that's why there's a range from, from tends to be, work out to be some of the best undergraduates in whatever program right. uh, through students who are, are graduate students. Right. Now, the, the program has changed substantially during your watch here at Chautauqua, and it seems like an immensely better program than it was upon your arrival. How do you see art education on the collegiate level changing in the future? How do I see... Um, uh, boy, that's a uh, that's an interesting question. Of course, technology is is a big deal. Um, I'm working right now to do, bring more technology into our program. It, it's difficult when you have 230 inches of snow and no heat in the buildings in the winter time. Oh. But but um, but we're you know we're making progress on that front. Um, I'm pretty sure we'll be ha we'll be bringing some digital media programs in and some some uh, time-based media, mm -hmm. you know, video that sort of thing, mm -hmm. next year. Um, and on the, on the collegiate level, how has it changed? Well, first of all, art is relatively new to the collegiate level. It only, they, the first MFA program uh, uh, was established in the late 50s. Late really? Late 1950s, yeah, yeah. It had always been an atelier-based kind of system. Actually, 
actually some of what we do at Chautauqua is more related to an earlier system of education mm -hmm. in that you focus, you know, you almost apprentice with, with someone or you really focus in a, in a, a totally uh, uh, concentrated way on that subject. Right. Um, rather than uh, um, coming to it in a, in a more partitioned way. Uh, so, so art in the schools is, uh, universities, um, is, as I said, a, a new, relatively new phenomenon. Even the MFAs didn't become essentially necessary until I, I went to school. You know, uh, the generation just ahead of me really didn't go get MFAs, mm -hmm. Masters of Fine It's a MFAs a Master of Fine Arts. Right. Um, so, so it's, it's always kind of that the art program's always, in many ways, the, uh, you know, the square, the, the, the square peg in the round hole or the other way around mm -hmm. uh, in, in an academic setting. But I think it, it, it generates a lot of uh, new ideas for universities. I think a lot of people look at what art programs do because they don't do things the way uh, more scholarly disciplines do things. Uh, right, uh, right. And so we see probably more technology in the future. Oh, uh, we'll see more technology for sure, yeah. I mean, every kid out there is drawing with their computer now. Right. Uh, you, you ha and so drawing itself, which is sort of the root of everything, has changed in a fundamental way. Not, not it's not been discontinued. We still draw with, you know, charcoal and pencil and paper and all that kind of stuff. But you have to know how to manipulate the computer, too. You have to know how to work on the computer. Have to is kind of a strong thing. There's always an exception to that. Right. But, but, um, but it is a big part of where education goes now. Um, right. Not, it, it, and it's the same kind of, you know, the people who say, oh, no, it's not, not painting anymore. But you know, there were people 500 years ago when they s went from panels to canvas who said, oh no, it's not painting anymore because we're putting it on canvas. Or there were people, you know, 150 years ago when photography was invented who said that was the end of painting. Mm -hmm. Or 100 years ago when, when film was, was invented, you know. Uh, there are always technological advances, right. and it doesn't end painting itself or, or, or uh, art as we think of it. It adds to the ability uh, to um, express yourself. Right, uh, right. I do a good number of documentary projects during the year, and I thought to myself when I was talking to the students, I wish I could hoodwink a couple of them into helping me with some editing. Uh -huh. Oh, and, yeah. And, and particularly with the, the color corrections, is what pepped up the, the video in your studio there, which, and that's just the nature of the process, mm -hmm. and thought they would also have some good judgment about length of runs and the like, and thought uh -huh. the, uh -huh. same, the same kind of skills were significant. Um, I can't believe it, we're almost out of time. Holy cow. <laughs> Can you believe it? What else, what else do we need to cover? Oh, I don't know, whatever you want to cover. Just, just give me a couple more words about Vachi and how it was formed. Vachi, okay. I, I, I know you pronounce it correctly. Vachi. Vachi. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, it, 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 and it, it stands for Visual Arts at Chautauqua Institution. It's the galleries, it's the School of Art, and it's our, our Visual Arts Lecture Series. Uh, it was formed because I wanted all of those things to come together under, under one, one group. Um, it was given the name Vachi uh, because I, ha I, I, ha I got a phone call on a Sunday morning after this had all been, uh, or a uh, Saturday morning, after all, uh, all this merger had been approved by the Board of Trustees, and I got a phone call from Marty Merkley and said, you've got 10 minutes to give me a name for this new organization. <laughs> <laughs> call me back in 10 minutes with a name, the board is meeting. <laughs> and I had just come back from Italy uh, I spent a lot of time in Italy, and uh, uh, I, I work with a program called uh, Saatchi mm -hmm. <laughs> at <laughs> Studio Art Centers International in Florence. And I was just going through acronyms in my head, and I thought, V-A-C-I, Vachi. <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's it. I called him back and said, it's named Vachi, and it's the name, that's, it's stuck. That's it's, terrific. It has a nice ring, you know. Great. This has been great fun. Sure. Unfortunately, we're out of time. That but was fast. You, it's fast, and you've <laughs> got to you've got to come back and let's talk Vachi okay. and art again. I would love to. And um, maybe I'll I'll uh, 
get a lesson or two from some of your best students up there. Okay, sounds good. Is that a deal? Sounds good. That's a deal. Thank All you right. so much. Thanks see a lot. See you now. Nice to see you. Mm -hmm.